All right, so these are you know, like the done product, but you should have been practicing. I didn't do the cylinder, sue me. So you should have more of these done using complementary colors to your duotone. Getting the shadows and everything else. And this should be very complicated. You should have been complaining the entire time that you did this, asking me whenever you're gonna use this, use this in real life and so forth and so on. Despite all that wonderful experience, we're going to move on to the next step. Yes, I have steps because I want you to be comfortable applying this to your artwork on your final. Uh, I was thinking about it and I've seen some, some people struggle at times when we go through this. And I was trying to figure a way to refine it down so that you could practice and get a greater understanding. This is kind of a crash course. This is kind of, you know you breaking through a wall and then dusting yourself off and wondering what the heck happened. Which is fine. It has to happen. Sometimes we had to be uncomfortable before we can learn something. So we got this done. The next step is we're going to cheat. This is how we're going to cheat. And we're going to print off something, Chris Pratt here, um, that you want to draw that you're going to draw in the end and you're going to map it out basically you're going to color over this with your complementary colors and um, you're going to go from the darks because this shows the array we have darks we have midtones we have highlights so this is going to show the array of the color so just like your boxes and your pyramids you just did you are going to go over this black and white and though you might not be able to see all my marks because it's real dark you're going to look really closely at what you're doing and you're going to put that red in or that complementary color in where you need to. And like the eyebrows should be wispy, so I'm making them wispy. And you're going to put that color in where it needs to be and then shade it out using little circles. You're not scribbling. Again, I will tell you when you're scribbling, and you can argue with me all you want, but in the end, you will not win. <laughs> so, little circles, and you can see here just on the side of his face, I am looking at the shade, the shadows, and I'm putting that dark red where those shadows are. I'm extending a little farther out to the midtones because the midtones should be. Um, a mixture of both the green and the red and I'm barely um, touching the, the pencil to the paper so it has a lighter tone the more pressure I add to my pencil the harder and the darker the tone is so where it's darker I want to apply more pressure where it is lighter, I want to just drag it across the way. So we can see that he's kind of got a red tint to his face here. Okay. In the shadow. And even in his eye. Remember, little circles. And go with his hair, real dark here. I'm really pressing hard. This is lighter, so I want to keep the red out of where it's lighter in his hair. Put the green in there so the green can still peek through. And we can definitely see. The red. <clears throat> Once you get the red, and I want you to switch off, I don't still need to do the red first and the green because I want you to try to match and just kind of do it in sections. I'm going to go over with the green, and then I'm going to go where it's the red's really dark. I want to go over that so I can get, make it into a brown, make my highlights green. 
So we get those complementary tones working against each other. This is what is called juxtapositioning. You should all know that I hate the word juxtapositioning because it's often used wrong. But we're getting that so we can get a 3D feel. And this is how you're going to cheat. Are you going to be as good as me? Right here, this is the first time that I've done this, but are you going to be as good as, as I am on this video? Probably not. Some of you are going to have varying success rates. That's okay because it's about practicing. It's about understanding the concepts mentally and physically. It is not about mastery. You never truly master anything. You just get kind of good at it. All right. I am not a master of art. I'm just kind of good at it. So, and we're going to go over that and get the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. You see here, I got a real light tone where the highlight is. I'm going dark to light. I'm adding the color. I'm doing circles. Okay. Even the hair, I'll go dark there, so you can see a little bit of the green. And this is how I want you to apply your duotones onto the thing that you want to draw. If you switch on your final, if you decide, I don't want to draw Chris Pratt, hey, that's fine. You don't have to draw Chris Pratt understand that you practice doing Chris Pratt so on your final you're gonna have a higher chance of success than if you were to switch to something completely different like a car or an airplane or uh, a fuzzy cat make sure that if you are going to switch you have a like item for your final because you will have a like experience you do not want to switch the texture because how the light reacts to the skin is a lot different than how light reacts to a, a metallic uh, object. How the light reacts to the skin is a lot different than how light reacts to hair. <clears throat> the intensities, the gradations, they're all different. I want you to just get an understanding and be successful. So don't try to switch it up too much. Make a decision, run with it, good, bad, or indifferent. Doesn't matter what decision you make, as long as you stick with it and you see it all the way through. Okay? <clears throat> Again, green, small circles. You're not scrubbing. You are not scribbling. Real small circles. And the pressure depends on your location. If your pencil is constantly moving, you can decide where to apply the pressure to apply the more color so that it becomes darker or lighter. Okay. Have a great and wonderful day.